It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good? No, it's a diaper on fire, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're shooting with the brand new 20 to 70 F4. And this is a completely new lens from Sony. They don't have anything like it. This is not a portrait lens, but I mostly do portrait photography. It's an F4 zoom. But we're just gonna see what we can get because that's all I know how to do. So this lens is pretty cool because like we got 20 millimeters on the wide end so we can do some pretty cool wide portrait stuff. Um, I also brought a flash. Because the lighting's so flat right now, it'd be kind of cool to put like some type of dramatic lighting on you because I can hit you with like light from the side. We can have like a shadow side. This is gonna look dope. So I gotta do a test shot here just to make sure I got the right lighting. Completely changes the vibe. It's cool. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. Direct hard flash with no modifier. I like the leaning forward a bit. If you move this leg over just a bit. Yeah. Love that. I'm actually gonna get that in a, a tighter crop too. So we're like 50 millimeter. Again, I'm shooting this all at F4. The makeup's popping. Oh yeah. Oh my God, that's really good. So I'm gonna go to 70 millimeters. Let me get back a little bit more. It doesn't even look like it's the middle of January. <laughs> well, it's not really the middle. I'm actually wearing track pants under these pants because I didn't want to be cold. I'm gonna go back to about 50 millimeter. I'm just doing waist up right now for this shot. Okay. You can do one looking down towards me too. Here we go, three, two, one. One more of those. So obviously a 20 to 70 F4 wouldn't be my first choice for portraits because the F4 is not typically something you'd shoot portraits with, but I'm gonna show you guys how capable it is and uh, we actually get some decent bokeh around the 50 millimeter to 70 millimeter range. So this lens has a nine round blade aperture and the aperture ring goes from F4 to F22. And like all Sony lenses with aperture rings, it's also declickable. So if you wanna do smooth transitions while filming, you can. This lens also has a nice smooth zoom ring as well as a linear focus ring. And it has two focus hole buttons which you can customize to whatever you want. And although this isn't a G Master lens, it feels a lot like a G Master lens. It has dust and moisture sealing and comes in at around 480 grams and it's 3.8 inches long, which is a pretty small lens considering it's 20 to 70 and it's very compact. But as you zoom the barrel, it does come out around two inches and they did really stress to us that they wanted to keep this lens super compact and light without compromising any image quality. Oh, the leaning, the lean, sorry, the way you just had it where you're leaning forward, this hand was kind of pulling back on the coat. Love that. Oop, flash didn't go off, one more of those. Do one looking towards the camera. This is at 24 millimeter. So on a typical lens, like a 24 to 70 millimeter, this is where you would start. But now we've got 20 millimeters, we can go wider. Oh, and another cool thing is, so this goes to 70 millimeters, but on a camera like this, you could do super 35 mode, so crop mode. Now it's like a 105 millimeter lens. So now we got like a crazy headshot lens. And then this is 105 as a super 35 shot. Crazy sharp. I hate when I step on something soft. Cause I, don't, I feel like it's like a dead thing. Ew. <laughs> it was like a banana skin I stepped on. I didn't slip though. The other nice thing about this lens having 20 millimeters on the wide end is when you're vlogging like this, you get a lot more in frame versus if you were shooting with a 24 to 70. And once you turn active stabilization on and focus breathing compensation, it starts to crop in quite a bit. And now you've got this nice, pretty decent wide angle lens for this kind of thing. Plus if you want to zoom in, you still can. Are you ready? Okay. 
one thing I thought I'd mention is the barrel distortion at 20 millimeters. Obviously the camera is going to correct this for video or JPEGs, but when you're shooting raw and you don't have any of the lens profiles, this is what it's going to look like. It looks a lot like a fisheye at 20 millimeters. There's also no profiles for this lens yet because it's new. So I just tried like a Sony 16 millimeter and I was able to correct it myself that way. And the vignetting is not that strong, but you definitely see it in the corners and you can fix that as well. And just for scale, here it is next to my 24 to 70 G Master. Obviously, this is an f2.8 lens versus an f4 lens, but it kind of gives you a scale of the size, and you really notice it when it's on the camera. It's so much lighter. Although this lens isn't par foco, they also mentioned to us that this lens has no focus shifting while zooming, and that's something nice to see. It has very little focus breathing as well, which is really nice. And what little breathing there is, you can just correct in more of the newer Sony bodies with focus breathing compensation. They also stress that they worked on perfecting the optical quality of this lens, so it's insanely sharp. This might be one of the sharpest lenses I've ever used. And when it comes to ghosting and flaring, this lens has all the coatings and corrections like all the newer Sony lenses, so it's awesome. I haven't seen the sun in weeks, so me shooting into this light is all I can give you for a test. Hamilton's actually a dumpster fire. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good? No, it's a diaper on fire, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Can you do uh, both hands on both sides and then lean forward? Cool. Now obviously this was from a portrait shoot point of view and this lens is made more for travel or landscapes but I actually think that it would make an awesome kit lens to pair with any of Sony's new full frame bodies. The image quality is insane, it's razor sharp all the way through the zoom range and I was really surprised at how smooth the bokeh was at f4 around that 50mm to 70mm range. It's also rocking 2xd linear motors which is more of a G Master thing but it's nice to see that this lens is insanely fast and silent. Now the big question is would I take this over an f2.8 zoom lens? just to have this nice compact lightweight size lens. And I'd probably say no, and that's because I'm an f2.8 snob, and I'd prefer to have f2.8 if I'm running into a lower light situation, or I wanna have a little bit more shallow depth of field. All that said, I think that if you're new to the Sony full frame system and you're looking for your first zoom lens, this should be at the top of the list. It ticks all the boxes. It's very competitive with all the third party options. It comes in at around 1099, and you can't really go wrong with that price. That's my two cents. Should be like, what is, what's all this, these stains? You're like, I was sitting in a Christmas tree. The lights are still on the Christmas tree. Oh, you're just committing. I, I promise you this will be a cool shot. The dumpster Christmas tree. <laughs> it's like, say, oh, actually do that again, but yeah. I was gonna say looking off that way and then chin up just a little with eyes closed. Love that. Cool. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. That was the new 20 to 70 F4 G. That's Beck. We used the flash. Thanks to Francis. That's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. See you guys in the next one. And there's a burning diaper down there. What's up? What's up, everybody? But it's got more of a Walter. <laughs> Oh, ultra wide. I was gonna say, do you remember that commercial he did where he's doing oh. the splits across two transport trucks? My butt crack was hanging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are we using that as a prop? Yep.